So Edmonton does have a large population of mosquitoes and always has. Uh, it's largely a result of our uh, essentially prairie topography. Um, we have a lot of rolling flat land around the city uh, with lots of little depressions that collect uh, flood water uh, both from uh, snow melt and from rain fall precipitation that uh, happens over the, the course of the season. And we have a fairly sizable mosquito population that takes advantage of that uh, sort of condition. Um, so there are a number of species that are well evolved for getting into these sort of temporary habitats and uh, can get a generation of larvae through and emerging as adults uh, in as little as uh, four to five days in ideal conditions, but usually in just a couple of weeks. Um, so as long as a puddle stays around for about two weeks or so, um, they can uh, get a generation um, out of that. And uh, then if it dries up again, there's not going to be any predators uh, that are able to take advantage of that habitat. And then as soon as it rains again, there's another new set of habitat for the mosquitoes to develop. Um, so we can develop uh, very large populations very quickly. And if we have continuous rain uh, refilling those environments, um, they can keep producing generations over the entire summer. We're lucky in that uh, these species uh, that we're getting in the Edmonton area are largely what we call nuisance species. Um, they are incredibly annoying in terms of their biting, uh, can have economic impacts in terms of uh, tourism, things like that, but they're not primarily disease vectors. So in other parts of the world, uh, mosquitoes are very important uh, as disease vectors and are carrying things like malaria and yellow fever and dengue and uh, Zika virus that's been in the news the last couple of years, things like that. So we're lucky in that uh, that is not a major consideration here. There is a, a difference in attraction for different people. Uh, different people do absolutely have different biochemistries. Some can be more attracted to mosquitoes than others. Um, it, in some cases, can be influenced by things like diet. Uh, it can be influenced by uh, even uh, things like body weight, alcohol consumption, drugs or medications people are taking. Uh, at one point, I was on some antibiotics uh, for an infection, and the mosquitoes just absolutely swarmed me while I was on those antibiotics. Um, so uh, a lot of the cues that mosquitoes take to find their hosts uh, come from their sense of smell. So basically anything that can adjust uh, the, the scent of a person can adjust how attractive or uh, repellent they are to the mosquitoes themselves. And uh, it's thought that that's the primary way that most mosquito repellents are actually working is either by masking or blocking the sense of smell and the mosquitoes essentially no longer detect that host. So our primary tactic in battling these mos mosquitoes is going after the aquatic larvae. So. Uh, we use a proactive approach. We go out as soon as those mosquito uh, larvae are actually hatching and developing in those aquatic habitats. We treat those aquatic habitats to reduce the number of larvae, uh, which then, of course, reduces the number of adults that are going to be emerging from those habitats. Uh, so uh, once we're seeing the development of those mosquitoes, we go out there, we treat them. Uh, they're generally in temporary bodies of water, uh, fairly concentrated in their numbers. So we can get uh, uh, hundreds or even thousands of mosquitoes developing in just one small uh, pool or puddle. So if we can reduce those numbers there, uh, it's a much more effective use of product and uh, greatly reduces the potential exposure to other organisms to the, the products we're using. Our program does not typically use uh, what's called adulticiding. So once they've actually emerged and are on the wing, we don't try to go and uh, use a fog or uh, ultra-low volume mists or anything along those lines to try to reduce the adult mosquito numbers. Um, it's generally ineffective uh, and has a really high possibility of exposure for a lot of other non-target organisms. And it's also uh, generally ineffective uh, in Edmonton, especially because our overnight temperatures are generally not high enough uh, that the mosquitoes are actually uh, active uh, when you're doing these fogging systems. And so it's uh, uh, generally, yeah, not really effective at all against those mosquitoes.